In this Gem Cut Studio or GCS tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to two features of GCS. I will first show you how to adapt an existing gem cutting design to a gem rough material of a different refractive index. And I will also show you how to adjust the length and width of an existing gem cutting design based on the length and width of what you need to cut. If you're a science whiz, you know that the refractive index is explained like this. The refractive index is a measure of the bending of a ray of light when passing from one medium into another. But for us laymen, our non-science types, basically when you cut gemstones, the facets act like mirrors and reflect light that goes into the stone back up through the top of the stone into your eyes. And the refractive index affects the way the light flows. And this is what gives you the brilliance or sparkle of a gemstone. Different gems have different refractive indexes and to maximize brilliance, you need to cut the facets at different angles based on different refractive index of the gems. And you have to watch out for the window effect where light will just pass through the gemstone and not be reflected back. So here's the scenario. Several years ago, I cut a beautiful pear-shaped indicolite tourmaline for a customer. Unfortunately, the stone over the years came out and of the ring and was lost. Fortunately for our customer, they had jewelry insurance. So they filed a claim with their insurance company and the insurance company, which is a very reputable company, tried their best to find a replacement stone for our customer. Yeah, good luck finding a three by five indicolite tourmaline cut into a pear design. Naturally, the company, insurance company, could not find a replacement stone for our customer. So the company authorized the customer to contact us and ask if we could cut a new replacement gem for them. I originally cut the gemstone using the Lazy Pear 2 design, which Robert Long, who is a great gemstone designer, published back in 1978. This design can be found, among other places, at facetdiagrams.org. And here is how you can search for the design. I always select the box, only show open designs with gemcad.asc files and cutting instructions. So I don't clutter up my screen with designs where the creator has not shared the cutting instructions. Then, after finding the design, I save the .asc file to my Gem Cut Studio Designs file. Then, I open the design with GCS and save it again. When I save it, GCS automatically converts the .asc file into a .gcs file, which is what Gem Cut Studio uses. I'm gonna save this file as Lazy Pair 2 3x5 Indicolite. Now I can work to optimize the Lazy Pair 2 design for what I'm cutting. When I cut this design several years ago, I do recall that it was a bit of a challenge. First off, pear shapes are challenging anyway. And secondly, I needed a length to width, ra width ratio of 1.67. I could not find a pear design I liked with such a ratio. So I had to adapt Robert's design while cutting it for the new length to width ratio. Things can go quickly wrong when you are changing the length to width ratio. And for a new cutter, if when you're cutting a pear design, the girdle, instead of looking like a straight line across the gemstone, starts to look like the Rocky Mountains, check your length to width ratio, you're probably off, and that can cause you problems leveling the girdle. So I have the design I want to use, but it's for a length to width ratio of 1.37, and I need 1.67. Also, the design is for gems with a refractive index of 1.54, which is for quartz, including amethyst, citrine, ametrine, rose quartz, etc. And I'm going to cut indicolite tourmaline, which has a refractive index of about 1.61 to 1.66. So first, let me make some adjustments in GCS. I want to be able to see any windowing. So go to render and use, click the use separate window color. And I set it to red because that's what uh, Reg does. So I copied what he did. And that way it'll make any windowing easy to see. And now while I'm here, let's see the stone color and change the stone color in GCS. So it looks more like the color of Indicolite, which is kind of a, a baby bluish.
So let's uh, first see how this design currently performs. To look at the performance, you go to Tools and then select Tilt Performance. And there are a lot of performance matrices built into GCS, um, and they all show up on this graph. But the main ones, the ones that get me close enough, and the ones that make the most difference when optimizing designs, are brightness and window, and maybe head shadow. So I will get rid of all the other lines on the graph, as they just kind of clutter things up for now. I'll take time to learn about them some other time in the future. Just unselect the table values and COS brightness on the graph for now. Now we can see how well this design performs. For me, I'm focusing on the zero degree of tilt, and that means I would be looking at the stone face up, which is how I generally look at a gemstone. And in the face up position, a piece of quartz cut by this design would have a brightness of about 70%, windowing of about 30% and just a touch of head shadowing. So let's just remember that as a kind of a baseline and see if we can improve upon it. Next, let's change the refractive index from quartz to tourmaline for our indicolite so we can see what this design would look like in tourmaline. Now, according to Reg, the creator of GCS, you're more likely to be successful when you take a design that was made for a material of a lower refractive index and adapt it to a material with a higher refractive index. Probably not be as successful taking a design made for a material with a higher refractive index and adapting it to gem rough with a lower refractive index. So we should be okay because we're going from a design with a lower RI to a design with a higher RI. The basic steps to adapting a design in GCS for gem rough with a different refractive index are to load the design, set the target refractive index, and optimize to an acceptable result using the manual optimizer. So select the render box in the lower right and change the material to tourmaline. You could also just type in the refractive index um, that you want to cut if it didn't have a material. Either option works. Now go to Tools, Manual Optimizer, and select one. For now, I'll just select the center one. Select Apply. Select Graph, and you can see that we have about the same brilliance of about 70 and the same window of about 30 as with the original design for quartz. But let's see if we can improve this. By selecting the stone to the left of our center stone, which adjusts the tweaks of the pavilion facets a bit, we see a much better brilliance and windowing, with brilliance going up to 80% and windowing going down to about 15-ish percent. So let's select that design by selecting Apply again. So if I was just cutting this design in tourmaline by using GCS, uh, we would have improved on the original design a bit by using the manual optimizer. But remember, we're also going to adjust the length to width ratio, which affects the angles and the brilliance of our stone. The next step is to change the length to width ratio from 1.37 to about 1.67. This is done by selecting edit and scale XY. You can either use the slider on the right side or just type in the new length to width ratio of 1.67. Notice that GCS adjusts the cutting angles in the cutting instructions as you move the slider. It also may add tiers, but not additional facets based on the new angles of the tier of the cuts. So when you get that 1.67, just select apply. And also I want to select the nearest index because I don't want to use fractional teeth in my 96 index gear. It would be kind of difficult. You'd have to use your cheater. It's better just to go select not to use fractional teeth. Now let me increase the size of our stone in the design window with my mouse. <laughs> As you look at our gemstone, we see that with the new length width ratio, GCS tried to make all the meets line up. A few don't exactly meet because of the new length to width ratio, but the design looks pretty good. Uh, the angles have changed, so let's see what the effect changing our length to width ratio had on our brightness windowing and head shadow and see if we can improve on it. I will use the tilt performance tool again to look at the design. We have lost brightness 
that's down to 60%, and we've increased window to 30%, and head shadows at 10% because of the new length to width ratio. So this is worse than we had before we changed the length to width ratio. So let's go back to the manual optimizer tool and see if we can get back our brightness and reduce our window. Selecting the stone uh, below the center stone increased our brightness and reduced our window. So it's about the best option that I see here. And it gets us pretty close to the original design. So I can live with the new design as yeah, I have to cut the stone in about a 1.67 length width. It's got to be about uh, three by five millimeters. So select apply and we are done. Now go to print and print a PDF copy of the design and we compare, can compare the two designs. The original design and the design modified for the different refractive index and length to width ratio. The number of facets of course has not changed, but because of the angles, there are more lines of instruction or tiers. Going from 24 tiers with the original design to 39 tiers with the adaptive design. So this new design will take a bit longer to cut as I'll have to adjust for more tiers on my machine. But overall, I'm happy as I now have the design that will cut the length width ratio I need and it's optimized for Indica light. Here's a link to the video where I use the now modified Lazy Pair 2 to cut an Indica light tourmaline as a replacement stone for our customer. You can take a look at how that gem turned out. In this GCS tutorial, I've shown you how to adapt a gem cutting design to cut a gem with a different refractive index. I also showed you how to change the length to width ratio of a gem cutting diagram and use the manual optimizer tool in GCS to improve the brilliance and reduce the window of a design after you modify it. So please let me know in the comments uh, what else you want to learn about GCS and if you have a better idea or just a better way of using GCS to adapt to design, please let us know. We'd love to hear your ideas. And as always, happy fastening, everyone.